I did a video recently where I set up this multi Wii board inside this quadcopter and one of the things I wanted to do was show how easy it is to set up the Bluetooth adapter on this um, Cryos SE V2 board. So what I'm going to do is run through how you install and, and also how you set it up and use something like this uh, Android tablet, this is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 and how you set it up so you, that you can wirelessly monitor the board, look at the um, stats and also change things like the PID settings on the fly. To install the Bluetooth board it's very straightforward um, you just plug it into this uh, front connector in front of the FTDI connector where you'd normally connect it to the USB with the black wire I don't know if you can see that very well the black wire at the front of the board this is the front, that's the rear and the um, green wire at the back once you've done that if I turn it around you can mount it pretty much anywhere standard Bluetooth bits and pieces um, I can actually fit it by the side it's about um, 12 millimeters by a uh, just under 30 millimeters long it's quite a small board there's no components on the back side so you can use a little bit of double-sided tape to mount it to your model when you power it on there are two lights that come on the first one's a green one which is the power and the other one is the status light which is red which flashes when it's waiting for a connection and goes solid red when it's made a connection to another device so we'll power this up and I'll um, show you how to connect on the Android tablet the application I'm using on here is um, downloaded from the Google Play the Android Marketplace, it's called the Multi Wii Configurator. And if I click on that, it'll start. And what you have to do is go down here, say connect, and you'll find that it'll um, give you a list of devices. It's actually connected to Cirrus BT. There we go. Um, if it comes up and asks you the first time, the passcode is four zeros, zero, 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 zero is the passcode. Now you can see we have a so solid red light on the, the um, BT adapter. Uh, the BT adapter comes up, you can find it when you search, it's called Cirrus underscore BT. And now we're actually looking at the quad in real time. So I can look at all of the different um, configurations. I can look at, let me just make that a little bit brighter. Is that too much? That's a bit better. Um, you can see that you can set the um, settings for the auxiliary one switch. We can look at the, um, the PID settings and we can change those. We can read and then write them back to the board as we can through the, um, the application. The other nice thing here is that we can also do things like we can actually look at the channels and the motor channels and see how that's jumping around. And we can also look at the readings from all of the telemetry. So this is live, so if I move the model, you'll see that we're actually reading all of the um, parameters, the, gyro, the gyros for X, Y and Z and also the three accelerometers as well. So it's that easy, really straightforward to do. Um, the board itself, I actually got this one from eBay but you can get them from anywhere. Um, it cost about six or seven dollars. I think the, uh, the ability to connect remotely and to be able to fly the model and also to view what's happening uh, in real time on the screen is great. I'm actually going to start um, tuning this a little bit harder now um, with the with the application because rather than have to keep landing it, putting the FTDI connector on, con firing up the PC, doing all those bits and pieces, I can do it pretty much instantaneously. So hopefully that's useful to people. Uh, no changes needed in the code or the sketch that's loaded to the board. The standard code just does it automatically. The only thing you have to be careful of is that you can't run the Bluetooth adapter and the FTDI at the same time. You have to have one or the other. So if you're going to have the Bluetooth plugged in, you need to make sure that you can get to the connector to pop it off if you want to go back to USB. Hope that's helpful to you. Thanks for watching, subscribe, post questions, happy flying.